Come to Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence for retirees looking for an ideal rental setting to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We offer bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, wellness and entertainment programs, all with a friendly community spirit on beautiful grounds. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. Coming up on this edition of Real to Real. A new academic year, a new man on campus. I'm Rebecca Drake and I'll introduce you to the new president of Our Lady of the Elms College. We take you to the birthplace of St. Anthony on our Catholic communications pilgrimage to Fatima, Spain and France. And enjoying life in new ways. These stories and more are just ahead on this edition of Real to Real. Hello and welcome to Real to Real from Providence Place at Ingleside, an independent senior living retirement community that's been part of the Holyoke community for 18 years now. Located at 5 Gamlin Street in the building that formerly served as the Sisters of Providence Mother House. We will talk to Richard Pelland, the director of Providence Place coming up, but first, Exciting times on the campus of Elms College in Chicopee as it begins a new academic year with yet another increase in enrollment. And the campus community is also preparing to inaugurate its new president, Harry Dumay. Rebecca Drake sat down with the new leader of the college and has this report on his vision and hopes for the future. Established in 1928 as the only Catholic college for women in Western Massachusetts, Our Lady of the Elms College is welcoming its 11th president to the Chicopee campus, and he has big plans for the now co-ed liberal arts institution. And that goal is to have not just uh, one of the best Catholic liberal arts colleges in Western New England, not just in New England, but in the nation. Dr. Harry Dumay, who comes to Elms with 19 years of experience in higher education finance and administration, believes the future success of Elms College will continue to be guided by the mission of its founders, the Sisters of St. Joseph of Springfield. It's a particular privilege to be um, here um, at Elms College to continue the, 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 the legacy and the work of the Sisters of St. Joseph um, to have have neighbors um, reaching out to neighbors and neighbors um, uniting neighbors with God. Preserving that legacy and the progress that Elms has made in recent years is deeply appreciated by the sisters who continue to serve the college. I think uh, we see in Dr. Dumay the strong desire, the willingness, the intelligence, the creativity to continue that forward thrust, to continue to make Elms College award-worthy as it has been in the past and hopefully will continue to be. As he works to strengthen the college financially and nurture its academic excellence and growth, Dr. Dume pledges to preserve the Elms founding principles and strengths. One of, of obviously is the history and the concern of Elms College for um, social justice and that permeates what everyone does here. So there is a community of spirit towards that goal. Um, another strength is obviously the human capital, the faculty, staff and students that I've talked about. And when these students, faculty and staff returned to the campus this fall, they found the new president to be a welcoming presence. He is a very nice guy, he's very genuine. He will introduce himself to you, he'll come up to you, he'll make himself known on campus. He's very comfortable with the students, he loves the campus. In accepting the position of Elms president, Dr. Dume also cites the college's commitment to diversity and unity. The respect for themselves, the respect for one another that Catholic institutions um, try to inculcate and to impart to our students is particularly essential and particularly needed for our world today. A world that is interconnected, um, that can be polarized, but that needs more than ever for all of us to find the common ground uh, so that we can live together and thrive together. 
In addition to academic excellence, diversity, and a commitment to social justice, Harry Dumay believes that keeping God in the equation increases the value of higher education at Elms College. In this very challenging, difficult world, uh, where they are called to blossom and they're called to flourish and to be the best that they can be, it helps a great deal to have that connection to, um, to God because it centers, it keeps you grounded, it keeps you humble. Um, it keeps you to, uh, to realize that no matter how much you've accomplished, it is because um, providence, because um, somebody has a um, goal for you and is helping you. It also keeps you connected with your fellow human beings. A native of Haiti, Dr. Dume attributes his own faith and respect for human diversity to the experiences in his hometown of Wanamint and in high school in the capital city, Port-au-Prince. I think some of the things that I've learned from that is, you know, the, one, the ability to <laughs> adapt anywhere, uh, but also, um, you know, the strength of character that you know, all of us have and that, you know, people are not defined by, you know, by what they don't have, but really what's inside of them, what propels them to continue. As he begins his first college presidency, Dr. Dume says he wants to get to know the students, faculty, and staff of Elms College to hear what their dreams and aspirations are. And he has this special message for the campus and the community. I would like people to know that it really feels great. I'm, how I would like people to know how excited I am and how thrilled I am to be here uh, at Elms College, to be in the Springfield area in Western New England, um, to have this privilege to serve this storied institution <clears throat> and to continue the mission of the Sisters of St. Joseph. A new president and a new chapter in the Elm story of helping students achieve success and seek justice in their personal and professional lives. For Real to Real, I'm Rebecca Drake. Dumay will be formally welcomed as president next Friday, October 6th, with a special liturgy and investiture ceremony in Veritas Auditorium, and I will be there to report on those events and we offer our best wishes to the new president as he begins his tenure at Elms College. As you know, we are here at Providence Place, a retirement and independent living community in Holyoke, in a building rich with history, beginning with the Sisters of Providence. And I'm joined now by Richard Pelland, the Executive Director of Providence Place. Hello and thanks for having us today, Richard. It's nice to have you with us. So Providence Place has been here for a couple of decades now as a retirement community, and it certainly was here long before, uh, founded by the Sisters of Providence. What makes Providence Place so special? Well, I think because the sisters lived here primarily, uh, obviously you know this is their former mother house, and it was really with great vision uh, a couple of decades ago that they were looking at their mother house and thinking, uh, how best uh, they could advance and assist people in the broader community. The sisters embarked on this endeavor to create a retirement community for seniors. It has been a successful endeavor right from the very beginning and there actually have been congregations from other parts of the country that have certainly taken interest and noted what we've done here. Deciding to enter into a retirement community must be a hard decision to make and there's so many options out there. What advice would you have for someone who's looking to uh, go into a community like this? Yeah, it is a very big decision for people. I think they first need to understand what it is they need in the community. For example, we're independent living, so it still requires someone to continue in their own way as they did at their home for the most part. If their needs are a bit different, then they would look at a different type of community. But I think for, for Providence Place, our success has really been on the fact that we're a known entity. The sisters are well known for all of their 140 plus years. And I think that kind of sets us apart from that standpoint. But I think the other element that I think is important is to visit places and to sort of get a feel for them, uh, get a sense of it. I think one of the things that people say when they come here is they can't believe how happy people are 
the spirit that exists here. And you only get that when you actually visit a place and talk to the people there. And I think that's probably my best advice is to do just that. Okay, thank you so much, Richard Pellin. This certainly is a gem in Holyoke. Thank you. And folks can call 413-534-9700, and we also have a link on our website at iobserve.org for more information. And still to come on Real to Real, we have more from Providence Place as Kathy Harrington tells us about a resident art show here. And part one of our Catholic Communications July pilgrimage to Fatima, Spain, and France. These stories and more are still to come on Real to Real. The Chalice of Salvation, your weekly spiritual connection. I'm Passionist Brother Terrence Scanlon, your Chalice host, inviting you to take time out of your busy days and join us Sunday mornings at 10. We welcome Father John Connors from St. Anne's Parish in Fairview as our Mass presider. The Chalice of Salvation, your spiritual connection, Sunday mornings at 10, right here on WWLP 22 News. Come to Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence for retirees looking for an ideal rental setting to continue their active, independent lifestyles. We offer bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, wellness and entertainment programs, all with a friendly community spirit on beautiful grounds. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700. One thing I think turns people away from the rosary is how it could be boring, how you say the same prayers over and over again. Upon reflecting on that for myself, I realized that there are a lot of things we say over and over again. We say, I love you, over and over again to our parents, our siblings, our friends, our spouses. And it never loses its meaning, and it probably increases its meaning. And so in praying the rosary, saying the Hail Mary over and over again, it's not boring. I'm telling my mother that I love her over and over again, or asking for prayers over and over again. I think I started to understand Mary as my mother in college. I had to do some reflection of my own and ask myself the question, well, why do I have a relationship with Mary? Learning about her as mother and learning to be able to ask her for things the same way I would ask my mother for things really helped me understand her role in my life, but then also how I could then explain that to someone else. I was on a retreat once and the speaker said, you know, you don't have to say it all at once. Like, Mary's not going to be mad at you if you can't get all five decades in at the same time. And that really changed my mindset about the prayer. I realized, oh, I can pray a decade on the way to class. I can pray a decade on the way back. And, you know, you walk around enough, <laughs> a decade gets done during the day. Now that I'm not on campus anymore and I drive to campus, I will pray in the morning while I'm driving or if I get stuck in traffic, I have one hanging over my rearview mirror not only for protection as I'm driving, but also so I always have a rosary in case I get stuck and have some time to pray. You are watching Real to Real, your window on the world around you. Here again is your Real to Real host, Sharon Rulier. In July, Springfield Bishop Mitchell Rosansky, accompanied by Father Gary Daly, director of the Newman Center at UMass, led a group of pilgrims to Fatima, Spain, and Lourdes in celebration of the 100th anniversary of the apparitions of Fatima. We bring you part one now in a series of reports produced by Father Gary and our senior videographer Bill Pakosha on the pilgrimage which began in Lisbon at the birthplace of St. Anthony. We are on pilgrimage. Join us as we visit the sacred sites and the beautiful vistas and landscapes of Portugal, Spain, and France. 
Our journey will take us through Lisbon and up the Iberian Peninsula to Fatima, where we will join in the celebration of the 100th anniversary of the apparitions. Traveling north, up the coast, to Santiago de Compostela to experience the sights and the sounds surrounding the Feast of St. James. We make our way across the top of Spain to Burgos and Loyola as we make our final stop at Lourdes. Travel with Bishop Rosansky and participate in the many graceful events of this magnificent pilgrimage. Lisbon is continental Europe's westernmost capital city and the only one along the Atlantic coast. It is the largest city in Portugal with just over 550,000 people in the city and a population of 2.1 million in the metropolitan region. Lisbon lies in the western Iberian Peninsula on the Atlantic Ocean and the River Tagus. It is one of the oldest cities in the world and the oldest in Western Europe, predating other modern European capitals such as London, Paris, and Rome by centuries. It is called, much like Rome, the City of Seven Hills. Today, on our first day of our pilgrimage, we arrive into Lisbon greeted with spectacular weather, a city filled with activity, beautiful scenery, restaurants, and historical sites. One of our stops is to visit the Bellum Tower, or also known as the Tower of St. Vincent, built in the 16th century. The tower was commissioned by King John II to be part of a defense system at the mouth of Lisbon's Tagus River and a ceremonial gateway to Lisbon. Not far away from the Tower of St. Vincent is the Geronimos Monastery, the former monastery of the Order of St. Jerome, officially known as Santa Maria de Bellum. Bishop Mitch celebrates Mass here today in this beautiful Gothic-style church. We begin our pilgrimage here in Lisbon, in Portugal, in a country that is imbued with the faith, in a country where we have seen many, many signs where the leaders throughout the centuries have governed because of the faith in which they believed. The construction of the monastery and church began in 1501 and took 100 years to complete. King Manuel selected the religious order of St. Jerome monks to occupy the monastery, whose role it was to pray for the king's eternal soul and to provide spiritual assistance to navigators and sailors who departed from the port to discover lands around the world. This the monks did for over four centuries until 1833, when the religious orders were dissolved and the monastery was abandoned. Upon entering this church, the interior is vast and renaissance in nature, and many notables of Portuguese descent have been laid to rest there, the most notable being the famous explorer Vasco da Gama. On day two of our journey, after a restful night, we make our way to the Basilica of St. Anthony for Mass, the birthplace of St. Anthony of Lisbon, as the Portuguese refer to him, or known by others as St. Anthony of Padua. We're in the sacristy of the Basilica of St. Anthony in Lisbon, and just amazing tile work in the sacristy. And this is really what Portugal is noted for, uh, the beautiful tile work. And each individual tile is painted, and it's all put together like a puzzle in many of the walls and as we see here in the sacristy. It's just amazing work. We're in the crypt of the Basilica of St. Anthony and here is the altar on which is the spot St. Anthony was born on August 15, 1195. Noted for his preaching from Lisbon, Portugal and on his way back from Morocco where he served as a Franciscan, the ship swayed off course and ended up in Sicily, Italy and spent the rest of his life in Italy and died in Padua. So many of us know him as St. Anthony of Padua, but here in Lisbon he is revered as St. Anthony of Lisbon and we know that he is the patron saint of lost things and for many of us we remember how we prayed to St. Anthony so many times to find the things that we have lost. So what a great honor to be here standing at his birthplace today. 
The Roman Catholic Church was established here in this city in the 4th century and is home to over 1.6 million Catholics, which represents 85% of the population. And nothing can represent that more than the beautiful churches and shrines and the patriarchal cathedral of St. Mary Major. After Mass at St. Anthony's, we take a very short walk to the Cathedral of St. Mary Major, the oldest church in Lisbon built in 1147 and is the seat of Portugal's patriarch, His Eminence Manuel III. The cathedral has taken on many architectural styles through its many years, and in addition to the cathedra or the bishop's chair, one of the more notable places in this cathedral is the baptismal font, where Fernando Bujao was baptized, better known as St. Anthony of Lisbon, or St. Anthony of Padua. We are now walking through the old part of the city. So we're just walking through the streets of Lisbon here, these narrow streets. The guide keeps telling us that it's all downhill from here, but it seems like it's all uphill, but we're making it. We are in Rocio Square with many shops and cafes and hustle and bustle of many people. We have leisure time here to hear some of the local talent. Shop in some very beautiful stores. And not to mention the many places to eat. Day three of our pilgrimage takes us on a 73-mile trip north from Lisbon to Fatima. On the way, we make a short stop in the small town of Santarém. This church of St. Stephen marks the place where Jesus chose to reveal the reality of his Eucharistic presence through a miracle that happened in this church in the late 13th century, 1269 to be exact. This place is a hidden gem, and it is considered to be among the most important Eucharistic miracles along with the Lanciano miracle in Italy. This may seem just like an ordinary uh, pit stop on our way to Fatima, but it's not ordinary at all because something extraordinary happened here in Santarem, and that's the Eucharistic miracle uh, that happened here uh, in the 13th century. And uh, we just witnessed it ourselves, and I had the privilege of viewing the Eucharistic miracle up close and celebrated Mass here with Bishop, and a great way to begin our journey to Fatima. This visit to Santarem has bolstered our faith as we prepare to receive the graces that are waiting for us in Fatima. Join us next week as we visit the sanctuary of Our Lady of Fatima and hear the amazing story of the three shepherd children and the wonders Our Lady shared with them and the entire world. And we'll continue our journey next week as the pilgrimage made its way to Fatima. And you don't have to travel overseas for a deeply enriching spiritual experience. Joining me now is Father Robert Gentile, pastor of Blessed Sacrament Parish in Holyoke, to tell us more about an upcoming mission sponsored by the Holyoke Deanery. Father Gentile, it's nice to have you with us today. Thank you for having me, Sharon. So next month, you will be holding a mission, Medicine for the Soul, featuring a wonderful speaker. Can you tell us more about it? Next month is our second annual Deanery Mission. It's entitled uh, Medicine for the Soul, and our speaker is Father Michael Sullivan, an Augustinian out of Villanova, Pennsylvania, a wonderful and very gifted speaker who's going to talk about God's infinite love and His mercy. Sounds perfect. What are the dates and times, and is anyone able to attend? The dates are October 2nd, 3rd, and 4th at Arley of the Cross in Holyoke, Massachusetts. The doors will open at 6, the mission itself will start at 7 and everybody's invited. We encourage everybody to go out and invite as many people as you can. 
We have a wonderfully large church that we're hoping to fill to capacity, so we have plenty of room for everybody. All right, Father Robert Gentile of Blessed Sacrament Parish in Holyoke, I'm sure many in the area will look forward to your mission, and thanks for being with us today. Well, thank you for having me. And if you would like more information on the Holyoke Deanery mission, we have a link at iobserve.org. Life at Providence Place isn't about a retiring lifestyle. It's a time to enjoy life in new ways. Tai Chi, yoga, and art classes. Regardless of ability, learning to paint focuses the brain and sharpens the eye to see the world in new ways. This week's art show proves that art is for everyone. Kathy Harrington reports. It's so relaxing. You get your mind lost somewhere else and uh, it gives you energy. Yeah. Providence Place resident Eileen Romani finds inspiration for her paintings from her travels to Italy. Most recently, that included this gondola ride on a Venetian canal. On Tuesday, Romani and fellow artists proudly exhibited their work in the cloister gardens at Providence Place. Family and friends strolled through the gardens taking in beach scenes, snowfall, and still life while enjoying wine and appetizers. For the amateur artists, this exhibit represents a year of their work and the progress they have made learning to paint with acrylics. It's a big mailbox with a I just received some flowers and the bird is waiting for me to pick it up. And this is my house. Louise LeBriviere says learning to paint is difficult for her. Very challenging, yes, I like it. The challenge for Nan Hurlbert was finding something rewarding to do in retirement. Now she's teaching Art is for Everyone. Oh, I try to find in each person that little kernel of what, uh, as an example, Sister Priscilla is, she calls herself a maniac because she comes from Maine. So anything that is Maine related or ocean or, um, you know, lighthouses and things like that, uh, she just immediately beams up and starts telling stories, which is the other part I love. They get a really sense of accomplishment um, after just a few sessions and they, they can do. It just seems to add so much to their, um, the way they look forward to coming to class. That includes Barbara McBride Williamson. I put all my energy into painting because I know it's gonna be a gift for someone. Before it's a gift, McBride Williamson's painting of her grandchildren on the beach and another of them walking on a dirt road were included in the exhibit. Hurlbert says each student has a different story to tell. Unlike some other traditional art classes, which really you paint this one subject, everyone in the class paints it. In my method, I let them choose what inspires them. And the cloister garden, with Our Lady standing at the center, was the perfect gallery for the second annual Providence Place Art Show. For Real to Real, I'm Kathy Harrington. The medical community believes that painting classes prove successful for seniors in part because learning something new can protect the brain from the aging process. And it also helps to protect the memory and ward off depression. Lots of talent certainly coming out of these residents here. And for this week, that's Real to Real. Thanks to Richard Palland and the staff here at Providence Place for hosting our visit today. And thanks to you for spending part of your evening with us. For updates anytime, you can find information and news on the Catholic Church, both here in the Diocese of Springfield and around the world on our news and information site, iobserve.org, including a report on this week's diaconate ordination of East Hampton native Frank Furman in Rome. Read that story and many more at iobserve.org. And also be sure to friend us on Facebook where you will be able to travel with our reporters as they work on stories for Real to Real and get the latest news on the Catholic Church. Like us at Catholic Communications. I will be back right here at this same time next week for another edition of Real to Real, your window on the world around you. See you then. Real to Real is a production of the Catholic Communications Corporation, funded in part by the annual Catholic Appeal and the support of you, our faithful viewers. Come to Providence Place, owned by the Sisters of Providence for retirees looking for an ideal rental setting to continue their active, independent lifestyles. 
We offer bright one and two bedroom apartments, a magnificent chapel with daily mass, restaurant style dining, wellness and entertainment programs, all with a friendly community spirit on beautiful grounds. Call for a tour, 413-534-9700.